today we've come up to my friend Martin's, another Humber man, and uh, right, we're going to get his his hawk running, which he bought for parts because, as you can see, it's uh, it's a bit well rotten. So this is purely a parts car, but it's already yielded many useful pieces and the engine is well it's a good and isn't it Martin the engine yeah, he's had it running before um, there's not a great deal left of the interior but this was, these were hawks this is a Humber hawk was a very luxurious car at one time worn up veneer dash all these uh, the instrument panel there nice to look at a lot of these warning lights have been put on extra because the story goes um, Martin thinks it's been used for taxiing or a long distance rallying or something because it's got a, the, the fuel tank's been enlarged by having a piece welded in you know a sandwich piece to weld it in to make, give it an increased capacity and it's got all sorts well Martin can explain under the bonnet it's got all sorts and actually the clock's working the clock's working Martin clock. yeah it's going <laughs> Smith's quartz clock so yeah this is it is uh, a manual transmission, four-speed manual, and it does have overdrive too. So that will yield many useful parts. What there is, uh, th there are no ignition uh, lights or anything because, well, we think it's been in. Martin thinks it's been in fire, although. Although that is, if I turn that off, that was the main beam there flashing away. So there is power getting through, at least somehow. Anyway, let's get back to the main event, which is getting this thing fired up. So this is. Just need a bit of petrol in. This needs a bit of petrol, yeah. And an intravenous drip. Because it's a uh, two and a quarter litre, isn't it, the Hawk engine? Uh, two, two, six, seven. Two, two, six, seven. Overhead valve. Pretty bloody strong engines. Yeah, that blocker one's just all in the chalk on the screwdrivers for the throttle. So, you're starting it with the key, aren't you, on the starter yeah, motor? Yeah. Let's see, Let's see if there's any petrol pumping through. Oh yeah, we've got, there is petrol there, yeah. Yeah, like that? Yeah, that's like that, yeah, that's it. And up. If you hold that choke shut, it should fire up. Trying. I'll just jam this bit of, bit of wood in then. Right, the choke. <laughs> now, hang on, I'll have to hold this throttle open by hand. Right. <laughs>
Oh, look at the oil pressure. The oil pressure, right. Yeah, you've got good oil pressure there. The oil pressure was really good. It was. It was excellent, well, but just mind you, key. that was cold. Just on the key, it went up before it started, it went up to 50. Which is good. The Mark 6 did exactly yeah. the same oil pressure light went out on the key before it started. There's no knocking or anything at all. No, no, it's not, I'm, I'm going to take that out and put it in the Mark 5. Yeah. There's, it doesn't, there's no blue smoke or anything? No, there's no, no fumes, no blue smoke from the back, it's, it's marvellous. And do you know how many miles it's done? No idea. I think we know what the speed all says, but that, that could be second or third time round, couldn't it? It could, could indeed. What does the speed all say? Oh yeah, 31. Likely to have only done 31,000 miles. Yeah. So, you think with all these extras, like with the larger petrol tank and. Yeah, it's got a huge petrol tank. It's got, uh, as you can see, the tow bar on the back. It had spare hoses tucked away under the wings. It's got a huge washer, windscreen yeah. washer system. Yeah. Got the extra these reservoir top extensions yeah. on the brake and clutch. I think somebody's wanted this for long journeys. Yes. Certainly, uh, certainly uh, seems to be a good engine. I have looked and can't find an engine number. Hmm. Should be on that side down there. I suppose when you start cleaning it up, cleaning the grime off it, it'll we might find one then. Might find a number somewhere. It should be there, but I can't see one. You'll be able to see that there's something there, even if you can't read it. But there's was it stamped in? It should what? be stamped on there. There's, there's just something there, but there should be a big long number across here, starting with the B. Five four zero. I, I can see one actually. There is something yeah, there, there is isn't there? But I don't think I don't think it's long. It should be about that long. But there's nothing up here. There, there is. I can see it? it. Yeah. Well, I'll have to try and decipher it. Uh, I've already turned the servo off. That's on. That's on my heart now. Right? Well, there we go. Very good. Running. And this will provide, well, it won't be seeing the road again, this one, of course, but it will help keep the many others will. on the road. The engine will be, will be, um, and this is, what is it, Martin, a, a Series 4? This is Series 4A. Series 4A, and that's, you can tell because of the roof line, can't you? Yeah. It was, and the indicators. It's registered after my green one. The chassis number is earlier. And my dream was one of the last 250. Because they, they updated them, they introduced them in 1958, and it was uh, 
very much inspired by the the 55 Chevrolet. Now, those early ones, up until about uh, 64, I think, had a wraparound rear window and a, 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 a curved roof line. And this, because uh, roofs were constantly updating, they, they wanted to be more stylish, so they gave it the flat roof. What were you saying, sorry? There's a number, it's probably, it's probably up there, isn't it? So that this is one of, one of the last of the Hawks. It's one of the last big Humbers. Is it, is it 67, this one? This is a 67 e reg yeah. e reg Well, it was registered, I think, in April. My one was registered in March. That door is really stiff. So there we go anyway, that is, that is it, it runs, it runs and it runs well, and it has uh, an overdrive fitted, so that's all good, all useful stuff. Okay. Right. Don't.